I'm Robin Rosado with Top Speed Golf. I got an awesome video today to help you hit your irons pure. I'm going to go over my favorite drill to hitting your irons really solid. So let's go and get started. All right, before we get into the drill, let's actually talk about the things I see the most when people are really trying to hit their irons. You know, on TV, you see these tour players, they're hitting their irons far and they're hitting it high. So the number one thing I see people do is they try to do that. They try to mimic hitting it high. Well, what does that create? Well, the most common thing I see is people start flipping at the golf ball. So my club head is now passing my hands and you're trying to really hit it high. So with the flip, it is going to be a matter of timing. You know, the reason why you're not hitting it solid consistently, maybe you're flipping it a little bit too early and you're catching the ground beforehand or you're coming out of your posture, hitting it thin, but sometimes you'll hit it solid, which I'll get into it here in a second, but it's not really going that far. Yeah, you've hit it high, but you feel like, eh, I can get a little bit more out of it. But then here's the second part. Someone came up to you, maybe even a pro came up to you and said, hey, you're flipping at this. You need to hit more down on it. So then you go and do that. You hit down on it, and again, it's really not producing the shot that you want. So I'll dive into it. I'm going to hit a shot here where I'm going to flip at it. We're going to go over three main numbers here at the GC quad, we're going to talk about our angle of attack, our spin loft, and dynamic loft. We're going to discuss how those three numbers are super important to maximizing your irons and hitting them really solid. All right, on that one there, I really tried to flip with it. So let's go look at the numbers here. So we're going to see here that my loft on the club was at 30, my dynamic loft was 35 degrees not really all that good. We really want to come into it. Tour average is right around 24 degrees. The loft of my seven iron here is actually 34. So I actually added a degree of loft there. Not really all that great. Angle of attack here was negative 1.1. Again, not really that great. Tour average is going to be somewhere about negative 4.3 down on it. And as you see here with my speed, I only swung it at 81 miles per hour because when we're flipping at it, I'm throwing the club early. So then my maximum speed is somewhere before the golf ball so by the time my club head gets to the golf ball I'm already deselling and as you can see there my, my distance was only 131 not again not really all that good so in this next shot here so I've just identified the fact that I'm hitting it high not getting a bunch of distance I'm flipping at it so I'm just going to do the opposite I'm going to hit down on this golf ball and let's go take a look at those numbers all right so on that one there I did hit more down on it because I was told to do that but let's go look at these numbers here so we're gonna see that my dynamic loft was 25 degrees. Okay, that's actually pretty good. We wanna be somewhere around 25, 24 degrees with our dynamic loft. But if we take this here now, now if you look at my angle of attack, is at negative 11. So that's gonna be a little bit too much than we want it to be. Remember, we want that number to be around, around negative 4.3. So because we've hit two down on it, and we're hitting, we deal off it better now, but if you look at that spin loft, adding those two numbers, our spin loft is gonna be, we're taking that dynamic loft and of our angle of attack, putting those together, you'll see that spin wedge is creating that spin loft. So it's at 36. Remember in the last shot that I just hit when I flipped at it, my spin loft was again 36. So all I did was take the same thing there and I just turned it down. So yeah, I swung it a little bit faster. You see I'm at 93 miles per hour, because remember when I'm flipping at it, I'm losing my speed a little bit too early. So because I'm hitting more down on it, I'm taking my maximum speed closer to that golf ball. So then I hit it a little bit further. I went 158 on it. But because I hit two down on it this time, and because my spin off now is at 36, the same as flipping at it, it didn't really maximize what I could out of this seven iron. All right, so that one felt pretty good. I didn't hit down on it as much. I really got some good shaffling into it. I hit the turf after the ball, produced a really good long shot up for me. So let's look at the numbers here. If you look at my dynamic loft, I'm at 23 degrees there. Remember, that dynamic loft is a loft coming into the golf ball of my club face. So that's pretty darn perfect where I want it to be. And if you look at my angle of attack, I'm at negative six there. So my angle of attack coming into it, I didn't chop down on it too much, nor did I flip at it. It's pretty close. Remember, tour average is about negative 4.3. So taking those two numbers together, now my spin loft is about 29 degrees. So I narrowed those things up. What it did, it produced a perfect flight where I wanted to, to go. Good height, it gave me a ton of ball speed. As you can see, I compressed the ball really well. So why don't we go ahead and dive into the drill here to how I got there. 
All right, so let's get into the drill here that helped me get to those good numbers I just showed you. So in this drill, I want you to grab a seven iron. The reason we're grabbing a seven iron is because I am gonna, we're gonna touch on de and clubbing, creating shaft lane. And what we're gonna try to produce here is we're gonna try to produce a lower shot, an over-exaggerated shot here. The reason for a seven iron, because a six iron, five iron, four iron, it's pretty easy to kind of manipulate to hit it lower. And with an eight, eight iron and nine iron, it's a little bit harder to hit it high, hit it low without much loft. So seven iron is the right club we want to take. So you're going to get your, your normal setup as you would for a seven iron here. And you're only going to take it back to about halfway back, so waist high, on the way back and on the way through. Now, on the way back, as we start to come down and hit the golf ball, remember, we're talking about de in this golf club. So when we're de it, the one thing I want you to feel here is I want you to feel like your logo of the glove is turning down towards that golf ball. As you can see right here, it is de in my club. Now marry that in my right hand. So you want both of our hands to do the, kind of the same thing here. So you've heard the term of covering the golf ball. We talk about feeling like you're petting the turf with this right hand. So my logo of the glove is turning down and my right hand is facing down to the turf, petting the grass. So now with that is I don't wanna just go ahead and hit the golf ball because remember we want a good angle of attack. So with this here, as we're de in the golf club, to get to your release point here, I want you to focus on your left side here. My left tip and my left shoulder are rotating out of the way, but they're not just rotating. You want to get them to rotate up and away. Technically at impact, my left tip should be about 20 degrees higher than my right at impact on a normal shot. So that's why here, when you go halfway back, we're de in the club and rotating up and away so that we're only going to halfway. Again, you should be producing a solid lower shot. It's an over-exaggerated feeling through impact. I want you to hit 10 solid shots like this. You can't move on before you do that. If you catch it chunky, there's a good chance you flipped at it. If you catch it a little bit thin, probably the same deal there. You want to have a nice, solid turf after the ball shot come out a little bit low, and when you get to 10, then go and hit a full shot and see if you can mimic exactly what you just did there with that drill as far as deal off in the club, rotating up and away with your left side here, left hip and left shoulder, and onto your good follow through. So now that we got you hitting the ball really solid with some good shaffling, some good compression, well, what do we do after we make contact? Well, we need to get to our straight line release. So Clay's gonna talk about that here in a second. 